Obviously, uh, Wayne does have his, his lighter moments, yes. and I couldn't help noticing that your father-in-law is Jasper Carrot. Yes, yes. So I wondered if he gave you any kind of uh, advice or acting tips for playing comedy. No, he didn't. No, he, uh, no he's, um, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Jasper's. His, I, I, I thought The Detectives was quite genius. Love that show. I, I love that show too, and I think Robert Powell is, uh, is equally phenomenal. Um, you know, it, it, he... Uh, no, he was. He, he's always been very generous and seemed to be, you know, a very, very big fan of the show, which was really nice. Um, but uh, I haven't got to mind the detectives for, uh, you know, <laughs> comedy gambits for the mentalist. No. <laughs> they don't quite cross over. They don't cross really. over. No, as much as I'd love them to. I mean, the, the whole the whole series was a was a total work of genius for me. Yeah. Now, obviously, in the show, Simon Baker has to be the smart one. He has to make, you know, the biggest leaps of <coughs> mental yes. genius. But I was wondering, you know, behind the scenes, if there was a crime, you know, on the set, mm -hmm. which do you think of the regular cast, including yourself? And mm -hmm. don't be shy. Okay. You know, uh, who do you think would be the one that would solve the crime? Um, that's interesting. Who would I think? I actually think Robin, probably, who yeah. plays Lisbon. Um, she... Uh, it's, I'm definitely... I'm like the anti-mentalist. My, my powers of perception are, you know... It, not only low, they're kind of like minus. Do you know? So what you I mean? notice like, less than the obvious. I notice. Yeah. Are you paying attention? Probably not. You know, <laughs> that's me. Are you listening carefully? Absolutely not. Um, the uh, Tim, Tim is T Tim occupies a wonderful world of his own as well. He's he's this. Uh, you know, it, it's so different for me because Tim is this very kind of jovial guy and he has a wicked sense of humour and yet I forget that people will see him 99% of the time as Joe and mm. very very deadpan so that you know it's a testimony to him and how good an actor he is um, Amanda has a very relaxed quality and probably wouldn't be all that fussed about solving uh, a crime but um, <laughs> I think Robin is the most on it you know she's she's certainly the person that I would go to if, if there are problems come up and it translates really well into the you know into the boss role yeah now, it's, is it true that your first audition uh, was for Troy and you got the role? Yeah, I was, I was really lucky. I, I was finishing up at drama school. Um, I signed with an agent and, uh, and, I, and my agent put me up for... Uh, I actually I found out about the script and, um, and I said, you know, they might be wanting to see some you know, bigger guys for it. So mm -hmm. um, it, let me know. And I remember my agent saying, oh, it's a Brad Pitt movie. You know, there, there, there's no chance they'll see you for it. You haven't done anything. And I said, all right, we'll, we'll give the casting director a call. And uh, he did. And um, she saw me. And, uh, <laughs> and then I met with Wolfgang. And I was an hour late to the meeting because uh, they'd sent the car late and the traffic in London was really bad. And not so, a good start. Not a good start. And I looked just like I was the most super casual guy in the world. Be like, ah, oh, yeah, big Hollywood director. I just thought I'd turn up whenever. And, uh, and he was really, and he went, so look, you're really late. Um, grow your hair to your ass and I'll see you in Malta and grow a beard. And I was like, oh, okay. And, uh, and the casting director went, you got it. And I was like, oh. So I went from doing like these school plays to suddenly being on this two and a half mile set of a $200 million movie with Brad Pitt and Peter O'Toole and thinking, oh God, I hope I don't mess this up. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, and I was only in the movie for a very, very small time, but what, a, what an incredible like baptism of fire, mm. you know, being thrown into it. I wanted, did, did it give you an unrealistic expectation or, or idea of what it was going to be like in Hollywood, getting your first role in a huge movie, your first audition right off the bat? Did you kind of think that it would all happen like that? Right. Um, I, I mean, if anything, I think it probably gave me, it gave me a good hunger and a, and a, a real kind of benchmark of where I would like to be. Um, it gave me a great admiration also, too, for the people, who, you know, working alongside... Brad Pitt, I, I went and watched all of Peter O'Toole's scenes every time Peter was filming, because for me it was like a, an acting masterclass, you know, and became close with Eric Banner. The, these people were just such solid examples of the kind of careers that I would love to emulate, and also the way that I would like to conduct myself. Eric, for example, is an incredible family man. He makes all these incredible movies, and yet still has his priorities in order, and um, doesn't buy into any kind of like uh, Hollywood lifestyle. And, you know, I. I, I think there was never, I was, I've never ever thought, oh, this is going to be an easy career. And, um, you know, after Troy, I, I came back here and very, very happily did an episode of Midsummer Murders. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in fact, my mum was more happy that I did an episode of Midsummer Murders than Troy. She was like, please tell me about John Nettles. Um, <laughs> that was funny. Um, I think good work is good work, whatever the medium, whatever the size of it. And, um, and no, I've always been very, very kind of grateful to get any opportunity to work and been very realistic about how tough this business is. You talked a little bit about acting um, alongside Eric Bernard. I wonder, um, who are your acting heroes? Um, Daniel Day-Lewis is, is a, an obvious one. Um, he, you know, he, to me, he inspires me because he, um, you know, not only is he, is he so completely chameleon and transformative from role to role, I think his level of immersion into something is just admirable. He talks often about, like, returning to a state of play and how, um, 
you know, as actors, we, we would benefit a lot from watching children because I think children are, are very uninhibited. And as we get older, we learn inhibitions. We learn to be inhibited about our actions. Don't do that. We mustn't do that. That's not acceptable. And so to return to that uninhibited state of play where you're not embarrassed and you're not kind of repressed is, um, is a really powerful one. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind his career. That would be nice. I have to ask you, as a big fan of the movie Beer Fest, um, oh, if that was right. fun at all to shoot, because it looks like it was fun. Yeah. And was that real beer that you were drinking? That's funny. Uh, beer Fest was a weird one for me, because I actually, it's one of my strangest employment um, experiences. I flew to uh, Albuquerque to shoot a much bigger role in Beer Fest. And on the morning, my visa hadn't cleared. And mm. there'd been a confusion with business affairs. And I was forced, I was forced to take on my costume, give my costume to someone else because they couldn't reach business affairs in LA because the Albuquerque time difference and um, watch my role go to someone else. They were like, we have to film this today. There's no way we can film it back in LA. And, um, and the guy who was playing the role came up to me and he went, um, oh, I really like that thing that you did at the table read. Would you uh, show me how that goes? I'm like, listen, mate, take my costume. <laughs> I'm not going to give you my ideas for the role as well. But Jay, Jay Chandra Shaka and all those guys, um, the Broken Lizard guys, were really sweet to me. And they said, listen, we've got this like, little bit part in it. We'd love for you to be in it because there's going to be a couple of other movies that we'd love for you to be involved in. And I said, for sure, I'd love to do it. They were really, really sweet guys. It, if I remember, it was non-alcoholic beer. Oh, um, that's very disappointing. It was very disappointing, <laughs> but, you know, um, and yes, it was funny. I, I think someone did a mashup once that a friend sent to me on YouTube of things that happen when Terminators get drunk. And they took clips of the stuff that I'd done from the Sarah Connor Chronicles where mm -hmm. I played the Terminator, morphing into that Australian drunk guy. <laughs> And it was like, don't make a, don't give a Terminator beer. I think was the uh, the tagline. So that's funny. Yeah. I mean, thank you very much. Oh, mate, my pleasure. Chat. My thank pleasure. You. Cheers, mate. Thank you.